says that he is as good with children as I am, which is not at all. We don't have many friends who have kids because mostly we try and shake them off. I'm sure you've got kids and I'm sure they're smashing, but I'm glad you've left them at fucking home. Uh, presumably so are you. My husband has a, a friend that they've been friends since they were teenagers and this particular friend has a little boy who's that sort of age. I'm going to say five, but it's very much a guess. And this little boy is always there every time my husband visits his friend because he hasn't got a job or anything yet. Um, <laughs> and the last time my husband visited his friend, the little boy said to him, will you read my book, please? So polite, so polite. My husband said, of course, of course I will. So the little boy handed his book to my husband and my husband read the book in his head. <laughs> this is how shit we are with kids. Recommendation. <laughs> but we were on a train, my husband and I, quite recently, sitting opposite each other, very busy train, very packed with loads of people, and I needed to tell him something, but I didn't want to say it out loud because a lot of people are around. So I thought, I'm going to try and just say it with me face, not use any words at all, just get the message across a different way. Now, we've only been married for two years, but we've been together for ten. Gives a cheer if you're in a long-term relationship. <laughs> So you guys will know especially well that you can often get a message across with just your face, can't you? <laughs> I thought that's what I'm going to do. Now, the thing I needed to tell him was that I was feeling a bit horny. <laughs> and it's not one to say that out loud, so I'm going to use my face. Now, I'm going to do the face that I did for him. I'm going to do that face for you. But I've got a slight problem in that I haven't figured out how to make it work in as wide a room as this. So upstairs and at the back, you'll all be fine, but right on the edge here, you might struggle to say apologies in advance. But for the rest of you, this is the face that I did to my husband on a busy train to let him know that I was feeling a bit horny. This is the face. <laughs> Sorry if you didn't say it there. Sorry if you didn't say it. It's quite subtle. It's quite subtle. She's doing it. Cool. <laughs> my husband got it straight away because we've got a really deep connection. <laughs> I read a survey that said that in heterosexual couples, men don't think that women initiate sex. And I thought, I don't think that's true. I think women initiate sex. I think maybe we don't call it that. Initiating sex sounds like something you do on a rocket, doesn't it? <laughs> Initiating sex. Five, four, three, two, one. Sex. I think maybe men aren't always so good at picking up the signals. Maybe that's where the communication falls down. So a blog would be like, yeah, she was lying on the bed. She had her hair all sort of fanned out on the pillow. She had a tiny towel on so I could basically see everything. And she just put lipstick on, which is weird because she just got out of the bath. But I decided to initiate sex. Five, four, three. Can I just stop you there in the middle of a countdown flower? I started ages ago. You weren't even in the fucking room when I started. <laughs> chat, that chat that you have sometimes before sex and occasionally during sex, that bit of chat. I think if you've been together a long time, that chat should come with terms and conditions attached, don't you think? <laughs> so if you say something like, you can do whatever you want to me. <laughs> what you really mean is, of the four things we normally do. <laughs> within the parameters we've already set. <laughs> But interesting, don't you think, that there's often chat before and during sex, but very little chat after sex, just sort of, no night, or like, I'm going to have a piss as soon as this thing flattens. That's it. <laughs> or maybe something like, oh, get us a biscuit while you're up. <laughs> or even something like, is the dog still staring? <laughs> that I would never buy for myself is sticks in a jar. Have you seen this? Sticks in a jar? Sticks in a jar? Does anybody know what the proper name is? Reed diffuser. A few of you shouted out at the same time. Thank you. If you don't know what it is, it's just a jar that has perfume in it. And the reeds or the sticks carry the perfume up, made the room smell nicer. I didn't know any of this when this is given to me as a present. It reminded me quite a lot of the incense sticks that my friend had had when I visited her at university. So I nearly lit the fucking thing. <laughs> He created a Joe Malone Molotov cocktail. <laughs> There's quite a 
a few girly things I can't really partake in. Uh, I can't, for example, I can't have anything in the bath that isn't me or the water. <laughs> kind of bath bombs, bath oil, bubble bath, bath salt, kind of any of those things. If I have any of those things, it makes down there <laughs> raw. <laughs> like R-A-W, sort of red and angry and shiny, and also just, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Pretty sure that's what the Katy Perry song is about. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's like that old pub joke, you know, that old pub joke, you'll know this. Uh, two Muggies in the bath, one of them goes, hoo, 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 and the other one goes, oh, sorry, I forgot you had a really sensitive vagina. Do you know that one? <laughs> but that sentence, I said that, if you say that I've got a really sensitive vagina, I meant that in like a practical way just then. But you could also say that at kind of sexy time, couldn't you? You've got to be careful of those sentences that on paper look like the same thing. Here's another one, got to be careful. I'm not wearing any knickers. Because I've got a touch of thrush and I'm trying to get a bit of air around. <laughs> in her 60s and she said to me, I used to be like you with the bath bombs and whatnot. I said, used to be. What's changed? She said, oh, well, when you get to my age, you can have whatever you like in the bath because it's all dead down there. <laughs> that is a small upside to a big downside, isn't it? <laughs> I have no feeling whatsoever in my vagina, but finally I get to go to Lush. <laughs> A long time ago, I was reading one of those books. You know those books that are ostensibly a romance but have a couple of pages of filth in the middle of smashing? I was reading one of those, and on one of the pages of filth, the lady of the book poured some champagne on herself. <laughs> and the man of the book drank the champagne <laughs> off her. And me and my boyfriend at the time, this is 20 years ago, we decided we were going to have a go at this. We couldn't afford champagne, so we bought some Lambrusco. <laughs> sitting upright, just poured it on, it ran straight in. <laughs> Smarted like a motherfucker. <laughs> I told that story to a friend of mine recently and she said, is that why you don't drink? <laughs> no. Not once when somebody's asked me, why don't I drink, have I answered, because it hurts me, Fanny. <laughs> ah, you're doing it wrong then. Take the cork out like that. <laughs> it was a screw cup. Imagine the skills I need for a screw cup. 